Newly formed tropical depression seven in the Atlantic likely to become Hurricane Gabrielle. All the details in today's video. Welcome in folks, great to see you on this uh, hopefully beautiful Wednesday. Now it is September 17th, continuing to truck along through the month of September and uh, now past the peak of hurricane season, but we are still seeing development out there. We still really got at least another month or so to go of um, uh, you know a time frame when hurricanes are you know relatively likely to form. So we've got one that is likely to you know get going going here over the next week or so already officially designated a tropical cyclone uh, as a tropical depression and likely to work its way up the ladder of intensity uh, here again over the next seven days or so. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. So you're up to date with the uh, always changing model data and my analysis of that data. All right, folks, let's go ahead and dive right on into it today and start analyzing what we're seeing out there. So uh, it's kind of this big old blob here. It's technically Tropical Depression 7, and really more specifically, it's the southern section of the blob and uh, actually looking a little less organized today than it did yesterday, which is funny because yesterday it didn't get a name and uh, overnight it did. So uh, always interesting how that works, but this is the Tropical Depression, and uh, I do expect it to become better organized over the coming days. You'll see here in a moment why it's not super organized right now. Behind that, we have another area of convection that we are watching for the potential of maybe some development uh, down the road, and we'll be talking a little bit about that one as well. Other than that, folks, there's not really much else going on in the Atlantic uh, in terms of any tropical trouble, so we can kind of just leave that map there. I do want to show you this. This is our water vapor loop, and um, this is one of the reasons hurricane season has been so quiet this year is we've had these outbreaks of dry air right now not as dry although you'll notice kind of a pocket in here of drier air uh, and again right down here is our tropical depression so uh, it is nearby and we do need to see if some of this dry air is going to entrain itself into the storm it's already trying uh, but you do notice that second area behind it dealing with a more moist atmosphere that's one of the reasons we do need to watch that one as well so uh, that's kind of some of the environmental background conditions out there and you put all this together and uh, this is what we end up having from the national hurricane Center. Not an overly impressive map, but uh, ironically enough, one of the more active maps we've seen in a couple of weeks is it has just been a pretty slow hurricane season. So here's Tropical Depression 7 sitting at about uh, 35 mile an hour winds, 1,007 millibars is the estimation from our satellites. And then that area behind it, uh, just near the Cape Verde Islands right now, having about a 20% chance of developing over the next seven days. All right, well, let's look at uh, kind of the broad picture. Let's zoom on into Tropical Depression 7, look at the environmental conditions, where it's heading, and how that may affect its intensity forecast. Let's go ahead and dive into Tropical Depression 7 here and kind of show you the general track, the current environmental conditions, and how all of that will affect the storm's future. Now, like I said, I know it's probably a little hard to see here, but this little blue L here is the center of circulation, at least estimated by the National Hurricane Center. And you can see the general path is kind of up and uh, not completely out to sea per se, because we will need to watch this for Bermuda, but it looks to stay out of the Caribbean or the Gulf or anywhere that would be troublesome uh, this time of year in terms of at least at least a Category 1 hurricane once we get about five or so days down the road, uh, becoming a tropical storm here over the next day or two uh, is uh, kind of the thinking there from the National Hurricane Center. So let's kind of dive into why that might be. And uh, we'll start here by... Uh, just taking a look at uh, some of the uh, environmental conditions ahead. So I'll keep the track on, at least for now, and uh, let's take a look at some things. So this is sea surface temperatures, and uh, you can see anything that is kind of the yellow color or above on that key there on the right-hand side of the screen, that's going to be conducive enough to support a tropical cyclone. And obviously, the warmer the color, the more explosive that system could be. And this one's going to track right over warm ocean temperatures, and you can see as it gets into those uh, 29 degrees Celsius range, that's when the NHC expecting it to potentially become a little bit stronger. Not only that, but the ocean heat content it's going to start to work in. It's going to find some pretty deep warm water as well, especially once it gets right into this range of its track. And you notice that's when it really starts to intensify up towards hurricane strength. So uh, that part makes sense here from the NHC on their forecast. Uh, let's also take a look here at some of the shear that we're dealing with. And I know the map starts to get kind of, um, you know, filled in a lot here. So let's zoom in. A little bit closer to the system and we'll put on this deep layer shear. 
Now, the red colors you see, the red contours, and again, I'll, I know it's kind of messy. I'll kind of circle things for you, but right up here, all this red you see, uh, those are um, higher shear values, which would be less conducive for a tropical system. Uh, the center of this thing is right on the edge of those uh, higher in shear values and lesser in shear values. So we'll need to see what happens here. There's a chance maybe the center reforms a little bit further off to the south and uh, to the west here. That would not surprise me due to some of the higher shear up north. Maybe the center kind of gets going under some of this new convection down to the south under a lower shear environment uh, could definitely be something that we kind of see unfold here um, and uh, we'll see if infrared wants to work yeah there we go uh, we'll also loop it here and just kind of get a you know idea of what the storm is looking like in real time and uh, yeah, you can definitely see uh, some of the convection is still kind of pulsy. It's not overly organized, and uh, this big blob up here isn't even really associated with the storm. That's under that higher in wind shear environment that we were talking about, so that's unlikely to really do much for the system. Uh, we can take a look at some other things and see if our scatterometer is picking up on anything uh, over the storm. Looks like we don't have anything from the scatterometer. We'll see if our... Uh, see if we've got lightning out there, eh, a little bit of lightning with this storm. We'll kind of stop looping it here as well. So some of these things load in a little bit better. Let's put our convergence and divergence on. Yeah, we've got some surface convergence there in blue, upper level divergence there in yellow. Uh, that would suggest that uh, that would help the storm intensify a little bit. Vorticity, yeah, plenty of spin out there as you would expect. Uh, now, another thing is the dry air. That's something uh, we need to watch for. Again, we've got a good amount of dry air here on the north side. If that kind of funnels into the center of this system, that could disrupt it. And I think it's a mix of that dry air as well as if we kind of zoom out again, uh, that dry air as well as some of that deep layer shear that over the next day or two is probably going to inhibit any real strengthening for the system. It's later on, uh, once it kind of gets... Um, back out into uh, areas north of the Antilles that those things will calm down and the ocean temperatures will continue to heat up. So that's a general thinking intensity wise. I'll quickly show you this as well. Um, and uh, we'll see. Uh, it looks like all of our models, all of our ensembles and everything are not initializing where the storm actually is. So that's something to pick up on here as well in the forecast. NHC again is saying that the center of this storm is actually uh, down here. But all of our models are saying it's up with that other convection. So we'll see how that affects the track. It very well could, obviously, further south than what a lot of things are showing right now. But still, all models keep it away from land. So that is kind of the key to take away there. All right, that's a latest look at what the storm looks like right now. Let's go ahead and break down some longer range model guidance with it and give you an update on any other potential development in the Atlantic. Well, remember all of those environmental conditions we just talked about, and now let's take a look at one of our hurricane models, the H-Wharf, and see what it does with intensity. And uh, you'll notice kind of what I mentioned, it kind of plateaus here now through about Friday, Saturday, and it's Saturday overnight, Saturday, at least East Coast time, that it really finally finds some of that more... Uh, conducive conditions for further development and then kind of takes off from there gets down to hurricane status as far out as the model goes into next Monday and did that kind of makes sense here if you look at the European as well we'll kind of pick up right around that time frame this is next Monday here's the European model showing the storm right here and uh, getting it down to hurricane status and does get it you know uncomfortably close to Bermuda uh, but it's still a miss from a direct impact and then kind of just curves on up and out to sea and is nobody's problem anymore. And I think that's going to be the likely scenario with what will become Gabrielle likely out of this one is uh, it just really is not big much of a problem for anybody. Now, watching it for Bermuda, like I said, any tiny shifts left or right would be a concern for the island. Uh, but luckily, it's an island that's built for these sorts of things and um, you know, it would not be their first hurricane if it does take that route. Now, what about behind this storm? Are we going to get anything else to develop out of that wave near the Cape Verde Islands? Well, uh, this is over the next coming days. Notice we have this plume of moisture down here, but still dry air reigning supreme over the Atlantic. And because of that, at least on this model, uh, not much else forms over... Uh, the next seven to 10 days, this is the European, you notice uh, outside of Gabrielle, they're well out in basically the central part of the Atlantic. I mean, nothing else is going. So uh, not to say that nothing else won't form. Things do sneak up on us and the NHC is watching it. And there are some environmental conditions that could support uh, development, but uh, still low in odds right now. All right, that's the model data there. Let's go take a look at some ensembles and end up the tropical segment in today's video. The ensemble data agreeing quite well with uh, the operational models. This is the European ensembles, and uh, you can see pretty well, yep, curving this one and back up uh, and out into the open Atlantic, and nothing else really showing up. And the goal for the Caribbean, even the wave behind it, the uh, Euro ensembles are just not very excited about. Um, and yeah, it's kind of the same thing here on the GFS as well, a pretty similar story. Now, I will very briefly zoom in here closer to Bermuda and give you an idea of uh, you know what some models are showing here. Here's the island of Bermuda, about 90% of the Euro members keep it further 
east than the island. However, again, like I said, they're also initializing pretty poorly right now. So with that further south um, track that is possible, you know, maybe this could get closer to the island. That'll be something to watch here. But pretty strong troughing either way. Going to pull this one up and out to sea, as again shown here also by the GFS ensembles. Uh, I know I've been watching for the potential of a Central American gyre or something to get going. It's still there. It's just not having any vorticity associated with it in a meaningful way. So the model's not picking up on anything there. But obviously, we'll keep you updated on that should anything change. All right, let's uh, go ahead and bring things on back home and talk about what's going on over the lower 48 over the next 7 to 10 days. Well, we've got a couple areas of storminess over the lower 48. We'll start with our mid-Atlantic system. This is the one that was spinning off near the Virginia coast. And for once, the HER model actually did pretty good with this one. Uh, you can see all the rain about where we showed you yesterday evening. And uh, the center now no longer what it once was. And the system was never even tropical in the first place. So you know, it makes sense that NHC wasn't looking at it. But it is bringing some rain into the mid-Atlantic today and uh, you know, kind of surrounding areas. Now back out into the plains, we've got this big upper level low spinning away and uh, that has brought some rain and uh, even some severe weather the past couple of days out here. And we could even see a little bit more today where we've got some instability overlapping with some lift down into this region of uh, kind of uh, Colorado, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas and Kansas. You could see a couple strong and severe storms today as well. So we'll continue to monitor that. Let's go ahead and bring things on back into uh, you know, some model guidance and we'll show you the her again to good yesterday. Why not show it again today, right? Uh, here's this afternoon, a couple showers, nothing severe here into the mid Atlantic, but we could honestly use the rain. So if you get some showers, you know, take it and run with it because not much rain showing up other than that. Uh, now, where we are going to see some rain and probably will continue to over the next seven to 10 days is into the plains where you see just rounds of showers and storms continuing. This is by tomorrow morning, Thursday, still raining out there for some of us and uh, staying pretty dry in the east. And honestly, folks, that's just the theme over the next 48 hours. I could go in depth and tell you state by state, but, um, you know, it's it's just some shower activity. And again, maybe a couple stronger storms stay where I circled a moment ago, but um, pretty typical stuff. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at some longer range data, including uh, those temperatures and rainfall potential over the next seven days. Here's that upper level map and why things are just uh, so quiet right now. There's nothing really organized uh, here in the weather department. Again, we've got a couple cutoff lows out here, uh, one in the east where we've got showers, one into the plains where we've got showers and even a couple storms. So that checks out. But you notice as I move this ahead into time, Nothing of significance jumps out at you. It says, oh, this is a big system until maybe right around here. Some of our models have been picking up on another cutoff low, diving down into the lower 48 around seven days from now. Uh, and they've been pretty consistent with the idea of this happening, but very inconsistent on the exact location and strength and what that's going to mean for our weather. Uh, now, I will tell you, if that does happen, we will get some shower and storm activity in that time frame. Let's show you the European. Here's that current cutoff load just bringing uh, some uh, you know scattered showers and storms over the plains. Uh, not much here in the east. In fact, high pressure kind of dominating. Now, as we get right here, this is by about a week or so from now, that system tries to dive back down and stalls out and bringing, again, some more showers and storms. But these cutoff lows are notoriously difficult to predict, and it's way too soon for, or uh, yeah, I guess way too soon now uh, to be talking about it in any depth uh, here on the model data. Now, one thing I feel pretty confident about is we are going to get a warm up. In fact, we're already seeing it out there for many of us. And if you look at the European ensembles, folks, I mean, it's a lot of red all the way 15 days out from now. Nothing really changes. Why? Well, it's because, again, we've got a lot of zonal flow, which is just keeping things uh, pretty meridional or zonal, I should say, not meridional uh, and uh, just bringing you know, pretty normal stuff, uh, warmer temperatures, milder weather. Uh, and obviously, if we get a cutoff low or something, that'll disrupt it a bit and uh, could change things up. But you can see on the ensembles here, they're not showing it super well. A little bit right in here, they're showing it. You can see how some of these temperatures drop a little bit. Um, but that tells me there's not a lot of consensus on where that'll be. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to need more time to figure it out. Precipitation wise, I mean, we are getting concerned about drought conditions at this point into the southeast and the northeast. And even over the next seven days, no real rain showing up. Uh, so we're going to need to keep an eye on that. But I do think we'll get plenty of rain, uh, hopefully not in any way that creates any major flooding. But, you know, on and off shower and storm activity up into the plains through about the next seven or so days uh, is kind of what it looks like here on the model data. So, all right. Well, that's all I got for y'all on this Wednesday. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, with that said, I'll see you all next time.